And all the people said, amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. One more time. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us bow, amen, to have a word of prayer as we prepare our hearts, amen, for this morning's time of teaching. Well, Father, we're honored and we're thankful that you have allowed us to make our way to this place again. A place, Lord God, that you told us to enter into thy courts with thanksgiving, into thy gates with praise, and to bless your name. And so, Lord, we thank you this morning, God, that there are so many other things that we could be doing. But we thank you, Lord God, that we have made our way to be obedient to you today. Yes. You've told us in your word how good and how pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. And so, Father, as we've all come into this place, one have come for one thing, one have come for another. Well, we've all come to lift up holy hands to you to say thank you. Thank you, God, for eyes that we can see and thank you for ears that we can hear. Thank you that we're closed in our right mind. Thank you, God, that we have the activity of our limbs, Lord God. We thank you that you are still our provider and our protector, Lord. And so, God, as we come into this place this morning, we say thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your power resting upon us, Lord God, for you've told us in your word that you never leave us, nor would you forsake us. God, doing this worship experience, Lord God, we want to give you the honor and give you the glory and give the praises that deserving unto you. God, you are our Father and we're your children. And we yield before you this morning in the name of Jesus just to say thank you. Now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as we prepare, Lord God, to share the good news with your people. You know what they have need of, God. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God. The word right now, Lord God, would arrest everything that's within them, Lord God, that needs to be filled in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that I, as I decrease, I ask, God, you increase within me, God. Thank you for filling me with power from on high, God, to stand and declare that you are God. And beside you, there is none other. Now, God, I ask you to stir up the gift that's on the inside of us, God, that, Lord God, less of me and more of you, that your people would know without a shadow of a doubt that you are God. And beside you, there is none other. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praises. We give your name the glory. And we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap those hands this morning. Amen. Well, first of all, we give God the honor and the glory and the praises. We are grateful for another day. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I promise you, I'm going to rejoice and be glad within it. Amen. I don't know what you're going to do. I can only, amen, speak for myself. I'm going, I'm going to rejoice and be glad within it. There are so many things, amen, that God has kept us from this week and he has protected us from. And we are so honored, amen, that he's given us another opportunity that we can stand before you, amen, as God's people to let you know that God is still real. Amen. And he's living because he lives on the inside of all of us this morning. We praise him for that, amen. Yes. We thank God this morning for our wife, amen. Give God the earning glory for the first lady, amen. for Miss Merlin, for all that God has ordained her out to do and what she will do, amen. We praise God that we have a wife that supports us, amen, that she supports us, amen, in the good and the bad, amen. Right. And we praise God for that, amen. She has not given up on me and I have not given up on her, amen. I think we're going we're gonna to run the race, amen. I believe we're going to do that, amen. And so we praise God for this morning. Thank God for our deacons, amen, this morning. We praise God for them. Thank God for the trustees in the room, amen. Thank God for the ushers, amen. Praise God for the media ministry. Thank God for the choir. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for the choir. <laughs> Amen. Brother Reverend Brown, Sister Cheryl, praise God for them. Amen. And thank God for you this morning, saints. To all our guests, amen, we welcome you here at Carries. We're honored that you would continue on stopping by to see us and to be a part of, amen, what God is doing here at Carries Baptist Church. Got one announcement before I go right into the word. Amen. George and Peggy, amen, would be honored to have you visit them next Sunday, amen, for a home dedication. Amen. 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 So we're, we're, we're going to go there on next Sunday after, after church. Amen. She, and, the, and the note says specifically wear comfortable shoes. Yeah. Amen. Specifically wear comfortable shoes. So we're looking forward to visiting them again. I've already been to, amen, uh, Brother Billy's sister Peggy's house already. 
And we're going to go back, amen, next Sunday as a uh, body, amen, for all that will come and be supportive to give God the honor and glory for them, him giving them this provision, amen, a house, amen, that they did not pay for, amen. What a mighty God that we serve. Come on, clap your hands this morning. Amen, a house that they did not pay for. And so we praise God that we are going to be a part of that next Sunday. Amen. Turn me over to the book of Exodus, 17th chapter. Amen. Exodus, 17th chapter. Deacon Combs have already read that this morning. Uh, but we're going to fill, we're going to deal with a few scriptures this morning. Amen. Second chapter, uh, Exodus 17th chapter. We're going to deal with that second through the sixth verse. And we're going to talk about the caretaker. Amen. The choir had already talked about it, amen, <laughs> this morning before I, I preached the word. Amen. Another, amen, another opportunity to let us know that we're all on the same sheet of music. I'm going to talk about the caretaker. This is a Father's Day message that I want to talk to all the fathers in the room this morning, amen. And for those who may hear by the internet, I may hear, amen, through our YouTube channel, amen. I'm going to talk about the caretaker coming out of, amen, Exodus, the 17th chapter, start at the second verse through the sixth verse, amen. And brothers and sisters, when we uh, think about a caretaker, a caretaker is a compassionate, and dedicated individual who serves others by providing physical, emotional, and sometimes even financial support to those in need. Caretakers play a critical role in society by assisting individuals who may be unable to care for themselves due to physical or mental health challenges, age-related issues, or other circumstances. Caretaking role can take many forms, each with its own unique set of challenges and rewards. Family caretaking often find themselves juggling multiple responsibilities, including balancing work, family, and caregiving duties. Caretakers serve others in a variety of ways all aiming at, a, in, at improving the quality of life and well-being of the individuals under the care. Therefore, as we celebrate fathers on this day, one should be reminded that a father is a caretaker whom God has given the role to care for their family as a disciple of Christ Jesus. On many, one of the many characteristic traits that a father needs as a caretaker is a heart of compassion. Compassion is required because there, are, there will be seasons in the caretaker's life where they will be, amen, have a moment where they're where in a time where they're feeling stressed, overwhelmed. But if the caretaker's heart has a heart of compassion, they will stand firm and never turn back from whom or what God has called them to be. The Bible says, according to Psalms, 103, 13 verse, it says, just as a father has a compassion, has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And so on this day, I pray that all fathers understand and accept the responsibility that God has called us out to be caretakers. Yes, sir. We are to be caretakers of our families. We're to be caretakers of our communities, and we, be, we are to be caretakers in every situation that we go in. Now, Pastor, you've got to help me out this morning because there may be somebody in the room in the morning, in this room, amen, still don't understand what a caretaker is. When God created man and woman, he created male first, and then he created female. When he created man, amen, he gave man a specific duties that he was to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the fowl, and every creepy thing upon the earth. And what that literally means that God let, gave care to man that we as men of God would care for the earth in which we live in. Now, I'm not going to be one that beat down men today, amen, because, amen, many, many times on Father Day, many times men are, be, are beaten down not because of they're not a father, but they're beaten down because sometimes they don't meet the expectation that some, some people put upon them. But this morning, we praise God for every man. That is a father who's caring for their family and who's caring for their community, amen, and who's caring at large that God would be glorified. A caretaker is one who has a heart of compassion. 
That means they, amen, they understand that sometimes on this race as a father, you and I are going to find moments where we're going through school, we're going, go, going through, where we're going to go through suffering opportunities. But the Bible teaches you and I, if God be for us, who can be against us? A caretaker. And so this morning as we celebrate all fathers in this room, as we celebrate, amen, fathers across the land, amen, our prayer is that, that you and I will come to the understanding that God has given us the keys to the kingdom. And if we use these keys right, God will be glorified. That brings us to our text this morning. In our text this morning, we find there's a young man by the name of Moses. And we all know that Moses is the leader, and Moses is leading the children of Israel, amen, to the promised land. We know, amen, that Moses have met, she have met God, amen, through a burning bush. We know that God has sent Moses down, amen, by Pharaoh's house to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But now Moses is in a very, very particular state, a particular, amen, particular uh, uh, shape because God now is causing them to lead people to a place that they do not want to go. And my brothers and sisters, they, amen, it sometimes makes me understand that I remember times when I was in the hospital, amen, and I remember, amen, during times of in the hospital, amen, when the doctor or the nurse would tell me to do certain things, amen, and I didn't want to do those things, but all they was trying to do is care for me to get me back, amen, to a place where I could be stable in God, where it's just the same as a child of God, that many, many times amen when Moses would lead the people amen towards the promised land he was leading the people who believed they didn't need to go and thanks to God as a father many times in the household amen God has called amen men amen uh, amen he's called amen the father to lead the house to a place that sometimes the house don't want to go. I wish I had one or two women in the room would just say amen pastor amen well Moses is leading these people and as Moses lead these people, amen, he find himself in a place where some of the people had an attitude about going. But even though they had an attitude about going, God was still calling Moses to take the people, amen, to a place where they didn't want to go. And one thing I've learned, Brother Oliver, amen, when you lead people to a place that they don't want to go, amen, they will find, you, you will find that there are always going to be a certain group of people that's going to believe that you don't care about them because you are forcing them to do something that they don't want to do. I wish I had one or two people in the room this morning, amen, that just would agree with me, amen. Even Jesus on one occasion, Jesus was one of the most caregivers, amen, that you and I could ever read about in the Bible, or caretakers in the Bible. Bible when we read the word of God uh, according that was one on one occasion where Jesus was leading his disciples amen on a ship to another place amen and all of us know the story in the book of Mark amen the storm came amen and the wind came and the rain came amen and the, and the, and the boat amen began to get some turbulence and the disciples amen began to panic amen thinking that Jesus did not care about them and Jesus was down amen in the boat taking a nap amen and they came to him and said Jesus do you not care that we perish? Are y'all with me this morning? Well, thanks of God, as Moses is taking these people to the promised land, amen, Moses has found himself in a place like a father, amen. Anytime a father leaves children to a place that many times they don't want to go, amen, the children will be in rebellious, amen, they will complain, amen, they will bicker, amen, they will, amen, choose not to do the things that the father's called not to do, but the father still got to be the father, y'all with me this morning, he cannot back down from what God has ordained him to do because he's leading his people to a place that God can bless them, amen, are y'all with me? So this morning, amen, as we think about that this morning, therefore, as a father and a role model, for the people of Moses, Moses lead, amen, these people with, the, he has a strategy to lead them to a place that God, amen, would help them, amen. And as a result, amen, in the text, Moses and the children of Israel come to a place where, where they have no water or no drinking water, which caused the people to become distressed, amen, disgusted and disgruntled and also discouraged. Let me say that one more time, amen. Moses found, lead these people to a place where they began to get distressed and disgruntled and disgusted and discouraged because there's no drinking water to be found. But therefore, this caused Moses, amen, as the caretaker to 
yield himself to Jehovah Raphael, amen, because he knew without a shadow of a doubt that God could provide. So this morning, there are four points I want to show us, amen, in the text that all fathers need to take heed to, amen, when it comes to being a caretaker, when it comes to our families, amen, when it comes to our communities, and even when it comes to the church. The first thing, amen, if you're taking notes this morning, the first thing the caretaker must understand that there will always be a demand upon your life. Pastor, what are you saying this morning? When I say there's a demand, amen, every person that you and I come in contact with is going to have a need, amen. And as a pastor, can I tell you, I'm a father in the house, amen. And many, many times as a father, you don't get, amen, the glory part of the father. And many, many times as a father, you get all the complaints and all the concerns. But that's okay, amen, because the Bible says, for all things work for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to their purpose. They, Moses is dealing with a people who puts a great demand upon his life. Why? Because the Bible picks up in that second verse of Exodus 17 chapter, the second and the third verse. And look what what takes place in the verse amen the bible said therefore the people contended with moses meaning amen they they bickered amen they debated with him that's what that means amen and said give us water that we may drink so moses said to them why do you contend with me amen why do you tempt the lord and the people thirst and their the, he, the people thirst for, there for water and the people complained against Moses and said, why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? Well, brothers and sisters, if you know the story of this, amen, this was not the first time that Moses had put her in a predicament where there wasn't no water. Amen. If you go back to first to chapter 15, you will see that God had brought them to a place by the name of Mara. Amen. And at that place, the water would build her. Amen. But the Bible said God tells Moses to take a tree and put a tree in the water and it would turn the water. Amen. To bring bring forth that it would be pure for him. So saints of God, what I'm trying to say to all fathers in the house, amen, there will come an hour in all of our lives where we're going to have a people that's going to debate with us about doing what God has ordained us to do. I wish I had one or two people who would just be honest about themselves, amen. But you got to know without a shadow of a doubt if God has called you out to lead folks, amen, as a father. If God has called you out, amen, to bring your children up, amen, the way God will be pleased with if God has called you out, amen, to stand against, amen, the, the stand against culture, amen, and stand for Christ, God will be on your side. Moses is a, is a predicament place this morning because Moses is a caregiver, but he's trying to care for a people, amen, that debate, amen, and bicker with him all the time. And I don't know about you, saints of God, every now and then as a child of God, you're going to find those people who are just not going to agree with you. But you got to know without a shadow of a doubt, if God God has told you to do it, fathers, amen. You got to stick to your guns, amen. You got to stand on the word of God and know that the word shall not, it shall not fail. The Bible says, earth, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall always stay. So the first point this morning to all fathers, you need to understand to be a father, that's a demand on your life. Can I tell you a story, amen? When I first got married many, many years ago, one of my worst fears, Brother Willie J, was to not, be, not, to not have enough monies to take care of my family. Amen. And I used, to, I used to bicker with that over and over and over again. But the Lord sat me down and said, Warren, get you some investment books. Amen. And learn how to invest. Amen. And learn how to save your money. Amen. And when you learn how to save your money, you will stop worrying about, amen, taking your care of your family. Can I tell you something this morning, saints of God? God is our perfect caretaker. Amen. And when we're going through a time of trouble, he has the power, amen, to move on our behalf that he will be glorified. Amen. Fathers in the room this morning, Moses is showing us that if you're going to lead, be the leader, it's going to take a demand on your life. When I meet men, amen, they tell me they're a father, I say, listen, don't say no more. Because when you say you're a father, that means, amen, whoever you have fathered, they're going to put a demand on your life. And you are, as a child of God, it's of trust and believe by faith that God would give you a strategy to help those people. In the scripture, when Moses cries out to the Lord, God's going to hear him. Second point, if you can't get notes this morning. Second point, amen, as a child of God, Moses not only had a demand on his life, 
But as a caregiver, he devotes himself to the Lord. Look what the scripture says. Fourth verse says, for Moses cried to the Lord, saying, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. So as a father, a caretaker, amen, a one that, amen, that has the power to take care of their, their family, you and I will find ourselves in a place that we will be distressed of how we're going to provide for our people. Are y'all with me this morning? I don't know no man I've ever met, amen, who have not been in a place where they've been distressed how to, how, how to provide for their family. I asked my father-in-law many, many years ago, I said, Papa Joe, how did you provide for your family, amen? I watched, amen, you when I was in high school, amen, and Merlin, amen, and Tessie had the best, and Mama Burt didn't even work, amen. It was only one person working in the house. And I said, Papa Joe, how did you do it? He said, young, young fella, I had to get 48 hours a week, amen. If I didn't get 48 hours a week, I couldn't take care of my family. Saints of God, what I'm trying to tell you, we've got to raise these young boys up to understand, amen, if you're going to be a head of a household, you got to do whatever it takes, amen, that your household, amen, will sustain, amen. It's no time, amen, to be crybaby. It's no time to lay down. If we're going to see the next generation do like we've done, we've got to raise them up to understand they got to devote their life to the Lord that God will be glorified. So Moses shows us in the scripture. He says, I'm a caretaker. I gotta, I'm, I'm taking care of these people. But when they come to me, I go to the Lord. I wish I had one or two men in the room, amen, just bowed down and said, thank you, Jesus, amen. I learned that when you come to me, I'm going to go to the Lord. When Charity come to me, I'm going to the Lord, amen. When Trinity come to me, I'm going to the Lord. When Zoe comes to me, I'm going to the Lord. Because there are just some things, Brother Eddie, I don't have the answer to. But if I devote myself to God, God will give me a word, amen, in season and out of season. Y'all with me this morning. So Moses shows us as a caregiver, you've got to devote yourself. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm praying that all fathers devote themselves to the Lord. Yeah, if they devote themselves to the Lord, saints of God, they will know without a shadow of a doubt that God will help them in the time of need. Jesus even said it this way. He says, according to the scripture, Jesus said that men should always pray and faint not. What Jesus was saying to his disciples was that there are going to come a time in your life as a caretaker that there are going to be some things you're going to face that you don't know how to deal with. But if you pray and you seek God and you devote yourself to him, God is able to open doors that no man can close and close doors no man can open. Are y'all with me this morning? So Moses' second point to us this morning is, as a caretaker, not only is there a demand upon my life, but I got to know how to devote myself to God. Third point, if you're taking notes. Moses shows us, amen, as a caretaker, that God is able to de demonstrate to others that he is God. Look what the scripture says right in the fifth verse. And the Lord said to Moses, he says, go on before the people and take with you the some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you have struck the river and go. Now, why is this so important? Well, why it's important, Brother Willie J, is, amen, because God not only wants to demonstrate to you and I that he's God, but he wants us to have an audience of people around us that they know our God is really God. Are y'all with me this morning? It's called being a witness. So when Moses find himself as a caretaker in the midst of the people, amen, who don't understand that God is able to do everything, he said, listen, not only do I want you to go, but I want you to take the elders, amen, of Israel, and I want you to take the rod, amen, pass the wide, the rod, because the rod, amen, represented the word of the living God. And every time Moses would have the rod in his hand and he would do miraculous things, God would be glorified. So, Pastor, what are you trying to tell me this morning? I'm trying to tell us, saints of God, as men of God, what helps you and I be able to demonstrate that God is God in his word, because his word is a lamp to our feet and a light unto to our pathway and that's the why the Bible said no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you it shall be the Bible. It's God's word that makes the difference. Are y'all with me? So Moses amen as a caregiver amen not only did he have a demand 
man, amen. Not only was he devoted, but he had a demonstration, which was God's word. And can I tell you something, saints of God? Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word is always going to stand, amen. If God has said it, it's coming to pass, amen. If you read it and believe it, it shall take place, amen. That's why he says in his word, amen, that it has not no power, not by might, but it's through my, by, by my spirit, said the Lord of hope. The Bible tells us, amen, that in the beginning was his word, and his word was with God, and his word was God, and same beginning. The word of God is what helps us as men of God be able to demonstrate to our families that God is able. And I thank God this morning that I'm a man, amen, that love God's word, amen. It's God's word that keeps me, amen, when, I, when, when everything is is failing, amen. It's God's word, amen, that protects me, amen, when danger is all around me. It's God's word, amen, that gives me direction, amen, when I don't have no direction. It's God's word that heals me, amen, when I'm sick in my body, amen. So the Bible says, amen, that Moses had a demonstration, amen, and the demonstration was to show the elders that the rod is still a real. Can I tell one or two men in the room this morning, don't you lose hope, amen, don't you give up, because I'm trying to tell you God's word is still true, amen. His word, amen, will stand, amen. That's why Moses, that's why Paul says, amen, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. What is the love of God? It's God's word, amen. God's word, amen, will keep me from falling, amen, when I want to fail myself. Are y'all with me? God's word, amen, will keep me running down the road, amen, when I want to give up, amen. That's why the word of God says, amen, that I am persuaded that neither life nor death, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor death, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. What is the love of God? God's word. Are y'all with me this morning? So all fathers in the room, God wants you to be a person that demonstrates your faith to others. There's no need to be embarrassed or be ashamed to be a child of God. Every now and then, when I'm out in the, in the secular world, I let people know I'm saved. I'm born again. Well, man, Mr. Charles, why you don't drink and why you don't smoke? Because I'm saved. Amen. Amen. I'm filled with God's Holy Spirit. Well, Mr. Charles, why you don't go to the I don't never see you cuss because I'm saved. I'm filled with God's Holy Spirit. I'm demonstrating to them that God is God and beside him there is none other. Come on, give God a hand, hand kind of praise this morning. You believe that. The last point, amen, that we see in the scripture, that every man must understand, if you're going to be a caretaker, that you got to know that God is the ultimate deliverer. Amen. Look what he says in the sixth verse. He says, behold, I will send before you there on a rock in Horeb, a Horeb, and you, you shall strike the rock, and water... And, and, and strike the rock, amen, and water will come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Now, why is that so important, amen, Brother Staten? Why is that so important that we understand that God is our deliverer? Well, that's important because there are some things, like I said, you would not be able to answer your kids, amen, or their questions, but there are just some things that you and I just can't do. And we understand, amen, that God is the ultimate deliverer. Notice he tells Moses, you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it. Now, why is that so important? Because water represents life. And if you're going to be a caretaker... And you're going to bring life to your family and to your grandkids and your great-grandkids. you got to do it not by your water, but it's got to be God's water. And so he says right here in the scripture, amen, Moses, not only, amen, have I called you to demonstrate, but I want you to, do, I want you to understand that I am your deliverer. And when you strike this rock, it's going to bring forth water that God's people will be glorified. And so I say to all fathers this morning, amen, happy Father's Day. But I come to let you understand and know that God has ordained and called you out, amen, to be a caretaker. My brothers and sisters, I come to a close in this sermon, amen. Caretaker played a vital role in society by serving others with compassion and dedication, whether, whether they're, they're family members, Professional caregivers or volunteer caregivers make a, a, a positive impact 
into the lives of those needs by providing physical and emotional, amen, and even sometimes, amen, financial, amen, support. But this morning, God is calling us all out as men of God to be caretakers for our families and be caretakers, amen, in our community that he may be glorified. That's why Jesus says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe upon him shall not perish but have eternal life. And we thank God this morning for Jesus because Jesus is our first caretaker, amen. He took care of our soul when you and I, amen, was a wretch undone, amen. The Bible said we were born into sin. And we were shaped into iniquity, amen. The Bible said, out of our mother's womb, amen, God, amen, he, he, he delivered us. But this morning, saints are going on here to let you understand that God is our ultimate caretaker. And when we do it God's way, we don't have to worry about nothing. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? So happy Father Day to all fathers. But please know without a shadow of a doubt, amen, you and I have a mantle upon our lives that God wants us to let our light so shine that men may see our good works and our Father in heaven would be glorified. Come on, give God a thank God for praise this morning if you believe that. Moses is an ultimate example this morning for all fathers to understand that when you're leading people, sometimes people are not going to be in compliance with you. But the most important thing as a caretaker is not people not being in compliance with you. It's when God is not in compliance. God was in compliance with Moses, and Moses was able to take care of the people of God. Oh, my God, that's so good news to pastor. Because when God is in compliance with you as, the, as a child of God, God will give you the tools. He'll give you the ability. He'll give you the intellect. Amen. He'll give you the power and the direction to take care of all those who are around you. So again, my brothers, amen, happy Father's Day to you. But know without a shadow of a doubt, amen, that God has called you and I out to be caretakers in the world in which we live in. That means if we're going to do it, we got to do it God's way that he would be glorified. Come on, clap those hands one more time if you believe that. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead and stand on your feet this morning. Amen. We give an opportunity that maybe somebody that will hear this word, man, man or woman, would hear this word this morning. And they know without a shadow of a doubt that there are some things they just cannot do. You know, many times, amen, as men, some of us have had good examples, and some of us have not had an example at all. Hey Amen, we have. Some of us have a good examples, and some have not had an example at all. But that's still no excuse. Because we live in a world that if a person needs help, they can get help. If a, if a person needs help, they can get help in the, in the world we live in. It's no excuse for any person to say, I can't because nobody would help me. Because all of us know without a shadow of a doubt, we as tools of God will help anybody that comes in our path that we can help. And so when I meet people to say, well, I just can't find, nobody won't help me. I said, no, you're just not receiving the help. Because that help that God is trying to give you is causing you to be stretched. And you don't want to be stretched. Come on, saints, y'all know I'm telling the truth. It's like going to the doctor and the doctor telling you that you've got to stop eating that sweet at night. You walk out there saying, right. doctor ain't helped me at all. I didn't go to hear that. He told me or she told me to stop eating sweets at night. Well, to put that in a spiritual package is when it comes to us as people, when God sends help to us, sometimes the help does not come the way we want it to be. When I look at the story of Moses, you know, I see a lot of error with Moses because Moses have led these people for quite some time. And my thing was that why would he debate with them? Why would he not say, did you not remember what God did for you at Moriah? What, do you not remember that? 
But instead of him doing that, he panics. He, when the, when the, when the, the man came in his life, he panicked. He, he panicked and debate with him. As a good leader, a good leader keeps good records. <laughs> That's what a good leader do. Especially if we've been down this road already. A good leader will remind the people to say, listen, did not God do it for us one time? If God was able to do it then, he's able to do it now. A good leader's not going to bargain and debate. He's going to tell you what God would do. And so this morning, it is my prayer that I'm praying for every caregiver, or caretaker, excuse me, that takes care of people, that they would know without a shadow of a doubt, first of all, there is a demand upon your life. Next, you've got to devote yourself to God. Thirdly, God wants you now to be a demonstrator. And lastly, he wants you to understand that he is the ultimate deliverer. 3D, 4D, saints. When we apply that to our lives, there is nothing that you and I can do that we cannot do in God. And I'm telling you, I have taken on the mindset, every young boy that come in my life, I coach football at York High School, every young boy that come in my life who has a heart to receive, I'm going to train them up to be the man that God has ordained them not to be. Amen. I'm going to train them up that, to be the man that God has ordained. There are some young boys out there who's longing for that father to be in their lives. And them, those are the ones I'm praying that God send those to me so I can help bring them up and let them understand what a true man looks like. Not in just natural, but in the spirit. A true man in the spirit will hold on to his responsibility no matter what takes place. Let me tell y'all a story. You know, Merlin was pregnant with, with Zoe many years ago. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. We was in England at one of her last appointments. And I was talking to the nurse, and the nurse was telling me about her family. And I said, where is your husband at? And she said, my husband left me. And I'm telling you, man, it's like, a, it's like somebody hit me in the gut. And I kept thinking about that, kept thinking about that. The Lord said to me, Warren, whatever you, whatever you do, you don't never run from your family. And the reason why so many children are mad with their daddies now is because their father ran away from them instead of staying in the fire and doing what God has ordained them to do. So I'm, my prayer is every man that knows how to be a man, all these men in here, all of us, it is our responsibility to be an example for men don't know how to be men. It's our responsibility, Brother Oliver. It's our responsibility. Banks, it's our, it's our responsibility. Hey, Brother Willie J, it's our responsibility. Brother Billy, it's our, Brother, amen, Eddie, it's our responsibility. Amen. Brother Stade, it's our, it's our responsibility. This is Father's Day. Brother Oliver, it's our responsibility. Brother Steve. Amen. Calvin, it's our responsibility. The demand falls on us. And if these young boys are going to know that God is God, it's got to come through us. Thank you, sisters, for standing the gap. Thank you for standing the gap. Thank you for being obedient. But it's got to come through us as men. We got to stay in the fire that God may be glorified. So this morning, I'm going to give an opportunity. Somebody may hear this message that's not saved. Word of God says, according to Romans, the 10th chapter, 9th and 10th verse, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. For with the heart, one believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Brother King, I, I see you back there. It's our responsibility. It's our responsibility, Brother King. I see you back there. Amen. It's our responsibility. I want all men to know it's our responsibility to lead this next generation to God. Not run them away. They're not going to do it the way we do it. But long as they come and we can love on them and let them know that God is able to do everything but fail. So maybe somebody here this morning, you're not saved, want to give you an opportunity You'll come on this Father's Day. Maybe somebody here, amen, you backslidden. You said, Pastor, I, 
I know who Jesus is, but I have not done what God has ordained to do. Maybe you're here, you want to come and give your life back to the Lord. Amen. Today is your day that God will maybe glory. Maybe somebody's here this morning who wants to be a part of this ministry. Amen. You know, amen, that this ministry is, is very vibrant. Amen. We have some beautiful people in this ministry. We really do. Amen. Some saints, amen, that has been in the warfare for a long time that can be an example for your life that God may be glorified. The door is open. Amen. The doors of the church is open today on this Father's Day. Well, Father, we thank you again this morning for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. We thank you, Lord God, for this Father's Day that you have allowed this world in which we live in to set aside a day out of all days that we can celebrate fathers. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God. First of all, we celebrate you because you are the father of all fathers. You are the father who gave your only begotten son that who would ever believe upon him should not perish but have eternal life. You are the father that allowed your son to go to the cross, Lord God, and die for our sin. You are the father that sits, Lord God, your son sits on the right hand of you, making intercession for us right now in the name of Jesus. You are the father who said the greater works that we would do because our savior goes to the father. So, Lord, I thank you for that this morning. I pray, God, for every father in the earth, Lord God, that you would quicken us and waken us up, Lord God. Let the scales fall off our eyes, Lord God, and let us understand, Lord God, the true responsibility you have called us out to do in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you, God, for the strength you've given us, God. You've told us in your, in your word, you said to be strong in the Lord, in the power of your might, put on the whole arm of God, that we will be able to withstand in these evil days and after all we have done God you tell us to stand so Lord I thank you and I praise you that we're not standing by ourselves but God we're standing upon a rock that you said upon this rock you were going to build your church and the gates of hell would not prevail against thank you God for the rock Lord God the firm foundation God that you allowed us to stand on in the name of Jesus Father, I thank you, God, for what you're doing in this house. I thank you for your spirit, God, for your bearing witness every Sunday that, God, you're with us, Lord God. You are with us, Lord God, through the ministry, Lord God. You are with us in the message, Lord God. You are with us, Lord God, when it comes, Lord God, to the miracles at hand in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, you strengthen every man that's that's weak, Lord God. Pick them up where they're falling down. God, I even pray for Marcus as he, Lord God, get ready to walk in fatherhood, Lord God, that you put men around him, Lord God, to help him understand that he's able to do it because you have never failed in the name of Jesus. God, I praise you and I honor you. I thank you that, God, you've given us such a, a great role, a great task in the world in which we live in, Lord God, that we can be a part of the creative, creative work, Lord God, that you put in the earth in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, thank you, God, again for all that you're doing. Thank you that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, nor have it entered man's heart what you have prepared for your people. But God is through your spirit. We give your name the honor. We give your name the glory. We give your name the praises. Because your name is above all names. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands. Again, to all fathers, happy Father's Day, amen, but know without a shadow of a doubt that God has put a demand upon our lives. He wants you and I to be devoted to him. Then he wants us to be a demonstrator. Yeah. Amen. Be, to be a demonstrator to this last, these last and evil days. But most of all, God is our deliverer. Yeah. There are some questions I can never answer to Charity Trinity and Zoe. But when I go to God, he always gives me an answer to give to them because he's my deliverer. Come on, choir, bless us. Amen. As we prepare to get ready to leave this place. Amen.
right, before I give the benediction, remember tomorrow night, 6.30, VBS starts. Six, six o'clock, amen. I got a fast turner, amen. Six o'clock, VBS starts, amen. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and on Thursday, we're going on a trip. Praise his holy name. So we're looking forward to that. Come on, let's, say the, let's, have, a, let, let's have the word of prayer. Father, now may the grace of our Lord yes, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide within our hearts. God, I pray you keep us never to leave us nor forsake us. God, I pray you bless our time this week in VBS, God. Pray, I pray already that your angels will go before us even as we travel, God, tearing down what needs to be torn down, build up what needs to be built up. And we will forever give your name the honor, the glory, and the praises yes, in Jesus' name.